Welcome to this week's snippet. This is where we get down and dirty on a specific topic. This week's topic, how are you wired? I'm Dr. Ben Lynch, and this is the Dirty Genes Podcast. Yeah, how are you wired? We are all aware of our skin color, our height, our weight, how things smell, taste, feel. If you are so focused on only the things that are outside of you, external influences, like what kind of home you have, where it is, uh, what type of clothes you own, what type of car you have, how your appearance is, and so on, that's all external. I wanna invite you in to know how you're wired. You and I are 99% genetically the same, spot on, identical. That 1% variation of how our genes are wired really individualizes us. That 1% is massive. And so if you do genetic testing and you identify where in that 1% change, that little bit of tweak, that little bit of difference can unlock a lot of compassion, of empowerment, and understanding. You have difficulty falling asleep at night, yet your partner right next to you falls asleep in two seconds. What is it? You are a night owl. They love being up during the day. You drink wine. You feel awful. Your significant other drinks wine and they feel fine. Something stresses you out. A cop pulls you over. You know, something happened at work and you aren't happy or something happened in school. You got a bad grade and you just bury yourself in that. You just anguish. And your your friends are like, come on, chill out. It's fine. It's just a grade. And you just beat yourself up. What is it? It could be how you're wired. It literally could be how you are built and your friends and your significant other are built in a different way. And if you identify how you are built and possibly even how they're built and you compare it and you say, look, I'm built to be chemically sensitive. There's benefits to that. If I smell a chemical, I can turn away and move away because I shouldn't be smelling that in the first place. And if I'm slower to calm down, then that's good to know. So I don't put myself in those situations. So instead of beating yourself up and saying, that you are not like everyone else, you're right. You are not like everyone else. And if you go to the doctor and you're struggling with chemical sensitivity, or you are struggling with difficulty falling asleep, or you're struggling with mood variations, and you go to the doctor and they say, it's all in your head, or they try to give you a medication, what you need to know is how you're wired. It's that simple. So back up for a second. What have you been struggling with your entire life? Okay. So for me, I'm sensitive to EMF. I can feel Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, cell phone signals, um, like no other. And people think I'm weird because of it. And I am kind of weird, but that's okay. I'm aware of electrical signals. I feel that stuff, like literally feel it in my head. I am chemically sensitive. I walk down the aisles of a hardware store. I know I'm in the pesticide or herbicide or the fertilizer section. I have difficulty calming down. I love to change from one thing to another quickly. I I don't like being in patterns. I don't like doing the same thing Every single day, I don't like routine. I like being dynamic. That's how I'm wired. And when I did genetic testing, I found out the why behind a lot of these different things. I found out, yes, I am very sensitive to EMF signals based upon genetic variations that I personally have. Some of my kids are not sensitive to Wi-Fi at all. I looked at how they're wired. They don't have the similar genetic variations that I do. So I have a very acute sensitivity to histamine because I have a receptor in my brain that it makes me very sensitive to histamine, which makes me 
hyper aware, hyper focused, uh, hyper irritable, uh, possible insomnia, sensitive to electrical signals. That is one. Just that one particular genetic variant is so important. And you hear me talk about MHFR all the time. In terms of chemical sensitivity, I have significantly reduced ability to eliminate certain compounds. Formaldehyde, for example, my glutathione genes, glutathione is your body's primary antioxidant. I have difficulty in my ability to produce glutathione and to use it, both. So if I know that, do I sit in the corner and wallow in my misery and say, oh, you know, that sucks, my glutathione, I can't make my own glutathione very well, and I can't get rid of chemicals very well. Well, in the beginning, yeah, I actually did. I wallowed in misery. I was pissed off when I got my genetic results back. And then I realized, well, wait a minute. If I know that my dopamine levels are naturally lower, and if I consume more protein, because protein provides tyrosine, and tyrosine provides is a really close step to producing dopamine, then that's why I feel better when I eat more protein. I am like a protein guy. I chow on protein and I feel good on protein. I'm, I'm focused, I'm alert, I'm in a good mood and all's great. If I lived on carbohydrate, I tried vegetarian diet for a while, I wasn't getting enough protein. I was not in a good mood. I would change from irritability to low moods and just wallow in my misery. And just, it just didn't work for me. And now when I looked at my blueprint, I know why. So what, I want to ask you again, put it back to you. What have you struggled with your whole life? Is it mood variation? Is it sensitivity? Is it learning difficulties? You can't fall asleep in noisy environments or you need constant stimulus to keep you focused. What is it? Or you need high stress environments to empower you to succeed in something. There is a woman who did genetic testing and she shared with me her results. And she found out that she has pretty significant ability to produce dopamine and it just stays there. She has reduced ability to eliminate her dopamine. And she lived in the city and her health was going down the tubes. And she lived there basically her whole life. She goes, well, I'm retired now, but I was like a, you know, investment broker. I was dealing with trades. It was stressful. It was high paced. Her blueprint was not designed to live in a noisy, busy, crazy city. And her blueprint was not designed for a high stressed, crazy job. And she did both of those. And her health significantly compromised. Sometimes you have to literally pick yourself up and relocate yourself to a different part of our amazing world in an area which is more conducive to your own internal wiring. And you need to surround yourself with people who also do not short your circuits, right? So she moved to the country and her health, she's feeling the best she has ever felt. And she's thankful she did genetic testing because she now understands how she was wired, how she is wired, and that she put herself in the wrong environment her whole life. And she wished she did genetic testing earlier because if you see how you're wired, then you can make educated decisions, strategic decisions to position your, yourself into a place to succeed. And so that is why I love genetic testing. You could do genetic testing for family planning. You can do genetic testing for pharmacogenomics or pharmacokinetics to, to see how fast you metabolize certain drugs, like warfarin. You know, maybe you had a heart attack or something, which would be terrible, but let's say you were put on blood thinners and the doctor puts you on warfarin. And so they do genetic testing to see how fast your body or slow your body metabolizes warfarin. That's important type of genetic testing. Or maybe your whole life you've been struggling with eating grains and, you know, you've gone gluten-free, you've gone wheat-free, but you know, you haven't been really that good at it and you did feel better, but you're like 80% compliant, not hundred. And so a doctor recommends that you do genetic testing for celiac disease. Test comes back, you have celiac disease and you're like, whoa, then you become 110% compliant. 
bam, you've never been healthier. You know, you knew you felt better avoiding gluten and not eating wheat, but, you know, you still drank beer periodically. You still had some occasional soy sauce and so on. But then you did the genetic testing. You found out you had celiac. Wow. Okay. You know, you changed your life and you feel so much better. Your liver enzymes come down. Life is good. You know, or you could do genetic testing to actually know how you're wired. And that's the genetic testing that I provide. That's the genetic testing that I enjoy. And that's the type of genetic testing that I believe really empowers people. I mean, they all empower people. So you just need to choose which type of genetic testing is important for you. And it could be dependent on the time. And if you're in a hospital and you need to be put on a blood thinner, you should barely look at blood clotting genes. And so your doctor should be looking at those types of uh, genes for you. That's important. So genetic testing has this ability for you to understand how you're wired and, and what you should do. And so with Stratagene, the genetic test that I provide at Seeking Health, it looks at how you're wired so you can optimize your function of these particular genes that are not disease-causing. They are not disease-causing. So Stratagene does not look at disease-causing genes. What it does is it shows you which certain genes are faster at being able to do something, which ones are do it in a typical rate, and which ones do it at a slower rate. But you have to know how to read the blueprint, right? Not everyone's an architect. Not everyone can read blueprints and, and build things. So having a health professional alongside strategy is very useful. But I, I want you to think again right now what it is that you've been struggling with your whole life write it down, and then what are you going to do about it? And if you just settled for that, that's not good. Having nosebleeds your whole life and just getting your nose cauterized, which is what I did, was not, is not the solution. Because what you've told your body to do is shut up, and you should know why you're getting those chronic nosebleeds. So for me, I'm super susceptible to histamine. And so I've changed my life to modulate my histamine levels. And it's made a profound difference in how I am. Profound. And that was because of genetic testing. So find out your blueprint and build your life around it. Take care. 